It's the middle of winter in Canada. We're freezing on the boat. It's snowing, it keeps snowing some more storm after storm, and I think to myself, we should go sailing. Yeah, we should go north. Yeah, 400 miles north. Let's go. So I get my gear on because it's 10 below zero Celsius outside, and it's covered in snow, so I get my shovel. Yeah, you heard that right. I have a shovel on my boat. So I shovel the whole boat, and I put a kettle on to make sure that I can get away from this dock and I'm not frozen into place, because the ropes love to freeze around here. I think there's a water spout over there. Holy shit, I've been watching it for a bit. Of course, when I was uh, editing the last video, I dropped the hard drive, and it won't read anymore. So I lost the last three months worth of footage, which uh, I was trying to keep a buffer so that I, because there's a few weeks to a few months sometimes in between uh, when I'm editing and publishing the video and where I am right now. It's just another rainy day. Another rainy day on the wet coast. Yeah. My neighbor, this little blue boat, is having a pretty hard time. Um, it looks like it's going to sink eh, in the next few days. We're not really low on wood yet, but I, I mean, like, there's no wind and I don't really have anything better to do, so I'm just going to go and uh, chop a bit of uh, driftwood. I, I've been uh, cutting some fur over there in the corner, uh, which is fairly dry on the other on the inside anyways, so we'll go and take a look at what's available today. Because as you can see, there's a, a lot of driftwood around. So this is kind of prime location for that. Do you like waterfalls? Here's another really sad boat. It's kind of a shame because it looked like it was a pretty nice boat in the first place. It's definitely not much of a boat anymore. And apparently people already cleaned it out, but and salvaged whatever they could. Uh, apparently the owners are stuck in the in Europe uh, because of COVID, unfortunately, which is uh, pretty sad. We'll get a little closer and check it out. Definitely a really sad boat. Looks like it was maybe a Columbia or something like that kind of fiberglass production boat. Yeah, now that I look at the cabin with the flush deck and the rounded cabin with the side windows, uh, it's definitely Columbia.
fairly dry inside. For about a week, we've been waiting in Harriet Bay for the wind to switch. It's been all northeasterly winds, and what we need is southeasterly. So, finally, in about a day and a half, the wind is going to switch. So, in the meantime, I'm going to make my way the last 20 miles to the entrance of the Johnstone Strait. So, that's the fun thing of having two different charts is that it says that it's zero here and then my other chart has a very different story it says that it's pretty deep uh, so it says 120 feet right now this is kind of stressful well, I didn't notice the uh, the difference uh, until basically last minute so I'm doing a, just a knot and a half or so 34 feet, so that's pretty good so far, I guess. What is the discrepancy? It's so different. I'm just doing one knot, just going super slow. So I can't see bottom yet, so that's good. I can see bottom over there a little bit. Fifty feet. It's not too bad. One knot, forty-nine feet. Well, lucky for us, the chart that said that it was zero depth. Well, it was wrong. It was about forty feet deep uh, the whole way. So we were lucky enough to not run into some rocks. We're taking a less traveled route north. We're uh, taking. Surge narrow and uh, then we'll anchor for the night and then the next day we'll catch uh, Oki solo narrows and uh, then after that we'll be in the open uh, or somewhat open uh, Johnstone Strait which is a pretty big step in its own um, but this uh, narrow surge narrow has a rock on the other side which I have to keep to the port side when I cross the channel so you'll see me uh, really like turning to port and uh, it's not the current Doing that, I'm doing that on purpose to stay clear of the rock. I chose to leave uh, from Harriet Bay when the tide started rising, so that I would have a, I wouldn't have to buck the current on my way to the Narrows. But that means that I'm going to cross the Narrows at the peak current, which uh, will be around seven knots. So it's going to be a little bit sportive. You can clearly see the tide rip that's pushing me to the starboard side and uh, I really need to stay to the port side to stay clear of this rock.
So as is, the electric motor doesn't have the best range because I could only afford a small battery. So with 150 amp hours at 48 volt, I can only sustain 3 knots for 3 hours. That does not mean that I cannot go faster. I am able to go all the way up to 6 knots, but it's just not sustainable with how tiny my battery is. And it will soon be remedied. I already have ordered new batteries, I just don't have them yet. So 3 knots for 3 hours is not much, we're talking about about 9 miles. So that's not quite ideal. So when I have to go a little further in days like today, where, like there's no wind at all, I uh, end up running the generator to extend the range, or I have two choices. I have a big generator with the bigger charger, or the small generator with the small charger which the small generator only allows to extend the range. Meanwhile, with the bigger generator, I can kind of run uh, like indefinitely at four knots or so. Uh, but it's just uh, not ideal that way. Because today's trip from Harriet Bay to Octopus Island was about 14 miles or so, we had to run the generator. So I went about like seven miles without running it and before it got too low I just turned on the generator before the narrows just to make sure I had that extra extra kick for the narrows too. So uh, it's kind of unfortunate that we hear the generator in some of the videos.